cometh in all of its power from God. I want to deal with this just real briefly. Because money cometh has changed my life. It's a revelation that the father gave to Apostle Leroy Thompson. Um, the revelation in itself. That's what I mean when I say it has changed my life. I mean in that term. That term. That term. That term. That term. That declaration. That decree. It has changed my life. Um, saying that term. I remember during the time where I, uh, I was sewing um, right before I met Dr. Mike Murdoch at that time. I remember there was one significant part of my life. And I want to always say this. When you're walking with God, there'll be highlights. And see, I have a lot of highlights in my mind where I broke open in the spirit concerning something. And I remember I was behind uh, I was parked by side of a Target in, in Atlanta, Georgia. And at the time, I went to the back of Target and I pulled money coming. But I actually had a driver's permit, right? I didn't have a driver's license. So I saw cops. <laughs> I saw cops pull up behind that um, target, like driving, like, you know, and I discern I don't want to look crazy. And then they start questioning me and ask me for uh, dot, 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 and what you driving and stuff like that. And according to legality, I was against the law at that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, because because according to driver's permit, you ain't supposed to be, you know, uh, uh, doing no motor vehicle stuff like that. All right. So. I saw the cops coming, so I just played it off real good. I just played it off real good. But then the cops left and I wasn't going to let nothing stop me. Money coming to me now. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm coming out. Today. Look at Job 36. Quickly, quickly. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. This is my day. This is my day. Tell somebody, this is my day. It's my day. Goodbye, Bills. Goodbye, Bills. Goodbye, chicken. Bye-bye, chicken. I'm going to fly with the eagle. Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh, I'll be out walk on this money. Woo! Woo! Howdy. Woo! Get some anointing. You put some up here. Woo! Put this anointing on it. Oh, put this anointing on it. I'll tell you what. You put something up here. I'm putting... Put this on nothing on this money, man. Woo! 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 Get some anointing. You put some up here. Woo! Put this on nothing on it. Put this on nothing on it. I'm telling you what you put some up here. Put put this on nothing on this money, man. Woo! Put some money. Put some anointing on this money. You put some up here. You put. Get, get. Prosper, prosper, I said, prosper. Give him the money, Lord. Send it to him. Glory to God. I place my anointing on this money. Your bills are paid.
get over here. You belong to me. You belong to me. Money coming. But now you won't sit there cute. Cute and prissy. Well, I'm not going to say money cometh. I mean, I look like an idiot saying money cometh. Well, fine. Get your little broke self out of the way. Because I'm going to say it all. I'm going to give so many signals that money can't help but to land in my lap. And now we're talking about violent faith. Every day of my life, Father, I thank you that $40 million is looking for me right now. Father, I thank you that money cometh to me right now. Father, I thank you that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I thank you you intended for money to find me, and it's coming right now. Father, I thank you I'm a money magnet. Hallelujah. Woo, I, make, I make it easy for money to attach itself to me. Hallelujah. Money come to me today. Oh, Father, I thank you that money's coming. I thank you favor's working right now to put some money in my hand. I fully expect unexpected income. I'm expecting money I didn't expect. Hallelujah. Somebody... Well, I'm, I'm not going to say that because, I mean, you know, people will think I, I'm materialistic. I don't care what they think. When the money arrives, they're going to think something else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I speak to my stocks. I speak to my, my retirement account. I speak to all of it. Money cometh, and it cometh too. Oh, it's cool. You talking about coming? Boy, showing up all the time. Everybody else crying about, oh, it's low. It ain't working. Not in my portfolio. <laughs> and we will get involved in snatching the wealth away if we have to, but we're committed to getting it in your hands, and that's why it's going in the ears of the Lord of Seboeth, the Lord of the heavenly host. Angels now are waiting and ready to see who will be ready to harvest this money. Honey, I got my angels moving every day. They're working on that 40 million for me. I'm telling I'm tell you what. I told my church, I said, look, when the 40 million come in, I'm going to wear a big old fat red hat with a feather in it. <laughs> and when you see me pimping out on the pulpit, <laughs> I am going to come out there, I'm going to play Superfly music. <laughs> I'm going to come out there with my red hat on, Superfly. I ain't got to say nothing because they're going to see that red hat. Right. They're going to they gonna see that the ship has come in, honey. Come on. Man, sound crazy talking about 40 million. Why 40 million dollars want to look for him? Go out of mission. Got something I need to do. I'm not, I'm not talking about 40 million dollars coming into the church or 40 million dollars coming to Crippler Dollar Men. I'm talking about 40 million dollars coming into my. Personal. My personal bank account. You hear what I'm saying? My personal bank account. Now that I had a church, you know, church need much more than that. I'm talking about 40 million the kid. You understand what I'm saying? 40 million or two, three, four million dollars. There ain't no money, and that'll be gone. 40 million dollars. Somebody getting it. I'm sitting up here trying to get y'all involved in something. And I, but two people said me too. The rest of y'all, rest of y'all sitting up there looking at me like, well, child, you know, I don't know that sound. I don't know, I don't know if I can imagine that. Well, shut up, because you'll never get what you can't imagine. Have you been alive in the last uh, um, 10 or 15 years, and especially if you have had come to know the Lord, surely you have heard about the money coming doctrine. Uh, that is being still preached today, which actually stems from the prosperity gospel that had been preached in the uh, early 70s and until uh, till this day. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that is a very deceptive gospel. And why do I say that? You know, because we all know that the Lord wants to bless us. We all know that the Lord wants to um, put things in our hands that we might be able to use it 
to glorify the kingdom of God. But this false teaching here, my brothers and sisters, is damn, damnable to the souls of men. Because it causes men to come into the kingdom of God for the wrong reasons. And that's one of the reasons why it's so damnable. Because many have come in under the, uh, uh, under the perception that the Lord God just wants to just bless them. And through them being blessed, that is their proof that God is faithful. But let me say something to you. The Word teaches us that God the Father calls it to rain on the just and the unjust. So it's possible that even those who are wicked can put a seed in the ground as they so teach and it will bring forth much fruit. It may even bring as much fruit as the uh, believer does. When you put a seed in the ground, it doesn't make no distinguishing factor who put it in the ground. It is who will water it and who will fertilize it and who will take care of it will determine what type of harvest that you will receive. It has nothing to do with the person who is sowing the seed, but it has all to do with God, the one who brings the seed forth and make it be into something fruitful. And that's where the enemy comes in when it comes down to this type of teaching. It has diverted the minds of people and have gotten their minds upon receiving from God rather than giving to God the Father. We're called to worship Him, to praise Him and glorify Him. And what happens is when you put money there, it gets in the way of our worship. It gets. In, and what about the multitude of people who have given and who have not received anything from the Lord for their giving because it was given with the wrong intent? And the wrong purpose because the word says the Lord loves a cheerful giver not a desperate giver not an anxious giver not one who who is giving to get but he loves a cheerful giver one who desired to give into the kingdom of the living God to see the word uh, uh, prosper throughout there but we have now got a focus on God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. And if any preacher say anything different, then people began to leave that venue wherever they are actually ministering the word because they're looking for something from God. And sad to say, you know, uh, and we heard that popularized during the uh, election period that many are looking for a handout from God. And that is sad. Rather to bring to Him the praises, the glory, the thanksgiving that He desire. He said that shall worship me in spirit and in truth. And that's what the Lord God desire more than anything. That we come to Him in that way. And if we come to Him in that way, as He taught in Matthew the sixth chapter that he will bless us and those blessings blessings will overrun us but he cares for us yes he does but we have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto to prove God is real. My brothers and sisters, that is not the truth. That is a lie from the pits of hell. And we must beware of it, lest it also wrap our souls and enweb us by its tentacles of unbelief. Because that's all it is, is unbelief. Let me say to you, one of the first things that Jesus Christ I'll say, the, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Let me say something to you. The gospel should be able to be preached anywhere, in any situation, at any time. But that gospel there cannot be preached to a person who has nothing at all in Africa, in South America, the tribes. In, in, in Australia, the Aborigines, that gospel would never go over with those people because it is a false gospel 
that has been engineered and the conductor of that train is Satan and it will have a train wreck because God is judging his house. And my brothers and sisters, I say to you today, depart from that gospel, if that's the gospel you've been listening to, and call upon the name of the Lord and repent of it and say, Lord, I want you more than I want anything in my life. I want you. I want you. Praise be to the living God. And God will surely bless you and deliver you from this false teaching that is out there spreading in the earth. God bless you today in Jesus' name.